Hello YouTube, I'm Toby. Now today we have yet another old uh, video card. This right here is a, uh, an old HEI Radeon card. Now before we install this uh, card in the system, I thought it might be fun to, um, well, just take a good look at it. Alright, so this is the uh, Radeon uh, 4870. As you can probably see, it's a blower design uh, with a blower back here. There's uh, still some dust in here. Uh, I haven't really, I haven't taken this apart and cleaned it. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. If you look in here, uh, in the uh, the shroud is kind of see-through actually, but there are heat pipes and a massive heat sink in here. And on the front right here we have our uh, I.O. We have the uh, exhaust right here. Now as you can see the uh, barcode that should be here explaining what this is, is gone. Uh, the only thing I had to go off of was that there's a model number uh, up here. Uh, Advanced Micro Devices or AMD uh, model B507 and this is what I found to correspond with the 4870. Now the system will be installing uh, this uh, graphics card in. It's, my, uh, it's an old build I did with the uh, GTX 260 so we're gonna switch that out from, for the uh, Radeon 4870. Before we get into benchmarking this card, I first thought we ought to take a look at the entire system itself. The processor is an Intel i3-2100 dual-core CPU clocked at 3.1GHz. This surely is an old CPU, but I have found that it is still useful today. For RAM we have a whopping 8GB of DDR3 clocked at 1.333GHz. I can't remember much about the hard drive though, uh, but it's old, slow and uh, quite noisy. It wasn't really that hard finding drivers for the 4870, but I saw no uh, Windows 10 specific drivers on the uh, website, which means I had to download the uh, Windows 8 version. Now Windows 10 and Windows 8 are similar enough for this to work, but I sure would like a Windows 10 specific driver for this card. When I finally got the drivers and tools installed, I uh, opened up MSI Afterburner and found that the idle temperature was around 70 degrees celsius. This is insane. At first I thought it was either the uh, temperature sensor on the card that was broken or that the afterburner program wasn't calibrated. But when I turned the fan curve uh, way up, the uh, temperature fell to, to around 45 degrees celsius. This however had the adverse effect of making the card sound like a vacuum cleaner with a sore throat. Despite the annoying loud fan, I decided to start the benchmarks anyway. Starting off with Fermark Crescent 720p, uh, we saw a score of 1260, uh, sorry, 96 points. This is not too bad. However, what I found most interesting was the temperature was only 60 degrees Celsius. Now onto the next benchmark, Resident Evil 6, the uh, benchmarking tool. I set the settings to as low as they would go, and the card actually seemed to handle this uh, beautifully. And we ended with a score of 5,729. This is way above what I expected actually. Subnautica is next. Uh, again, I set the presets to low and started the game. Even though the game itself said the card wasn't good enough to play this game, I did it with ease. Uh, the frame rates were a little unstable, but only, uh, only once did it go on under uh, 50 frames per second. Our last benchmark of today is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I let the settings autofill and fired up an offline match against bots. Again, the frame rate seemed a little unstable, but for the most part, it was between 100 and 200 frames per second. Now, when I had uh, done all my benchmarks, I looked at the uh, temperatures, the uh, maximum temperatures, and for Resident Evil, Subnautica, and Counter Strike Global Offensive, the uh, temperature seemed to uh, be around 50 degrees. Uh, so, I'm thinking this. Um, fan curve I made was maybe a little too aggressive and uh, if you have this card you could dial it back a little bit. But conclusion time, is it still a good card? Well, sort of. Uh, it's getting old and thus there are some games that it simply cannot play. I wanted to try out PUBG but I simply couldn't get it get into the game itself. 
I'm not sure if this is the card's fault or the fault of the entire system though, I will try again someday. But if all you want is to play uh, CSGO, there are cheaper cards out there that can do well just that, since CSGO is not that hard of a game. So this card is pretty much just one that's fun to play with actually. Thank you very much for watching and have a happy new year.